Hello, Dimsdale. I'm Jet Ubacho with today's editorial, which technically makes it a jetatorial. A 21-year-old rock climber, Stuart Philip Porter from Wisconsin, died after falling while rappelling down Devil's Tower National Monument in Wyoming. The incident occurred on Sunday evening as Porter was descending the second pitch of the El Craco route. Porter's climbing partner, stranded on the rock face, was later rescued with the help of local climbing guides. The National Park Service emphasized that while fatalities at the tower are rare, climbing is inherently dangerous. They urge climbers to follow safety guidelines, including inspecting anchors and preparing for rappel routes. Over the tower's 100-year climbing history, this marks the seventh fatality. The NPS thanked search and rescue teams and offered condolences to Porter's family. In other developments, Coca-Cola is discontinuing its spiced flavor, which launched in February due to underwhelming sales and consumer confusion. Spiced blending traditional Coke with raspberry was intended to attract younger drinkers. Still, it failed to gain traction amid competition from trendier brands like Olipop and Poppy. Despite being promoted as a permanent flavor, it struggled to stand out among Coca-Cola's numerous limited-time offerings. This decision is part of a broader overhaul of Coca-Cola's portfolio, which includes phasing out other flavors like cherry vanilla and Diet Coke with Splenda. The company is shifting focus towards sparkling waters and hydration drinks, such as Topo Chico and Body Armor. In other updates, Spanish police arrested five people for scamming two women out of 325,000 euros by impersonating actor Brad Pitt online. Operation Berlina, spanning eight provinces, investigated ten others involved in the fraud. The criminals used a Brad Pitt fan site to target vulnerable women, promising romantic relationships and investment opportunities. The scammers built psychological profiles of their victims who were suffering from depression and seeking emotional support. Believing they were communicating with Pitt, the women transferred large sums of money. Police recovered 85,000 euros of the stolen funds. The scheme involved fake identity documents, multiple bank accounts, and money laundering. In another update, the Police Executive Research Forum released new recommendations urging police departments to change how officers use force, particularly during interactions with people in medical, mental, or drug crises, inspired by an AP investigation documenting over 1,000 deaths tied to police restraint. The report calls for improved coordination with medical responders, better de-escalation tactics, and limiting dangerous restraint techniques like prone positioning. The recommendations aim to reduce civilian deaths and hold police accountable while emphasizing that people in crisis should be treated as patients, not suspects. The report also advises against police influencing medics to administer sedatives during arrests. These guidelines will be incorporated into future police training. From all of us here, stay classy, Dimsdale.